What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to What Is Your Story? Today we have my guest, Phil, on the show. Uh, he's someone that I met back in, I think, 2016 or so down at Lifetime Fitness. I joined a gym out there um, just for training purposes, and he was a PT currently working there down in Chestnut Hill area. Um, we had a lot in common, a very, very similar mindset, so we connected pretty much right away. Uh, he obviously, like I said, is a PT. He no longer works there, but he is doing uh, PT work. So he's a physical therapist. He's also got his own company that he's running called Element 26 and doing a lot of big things with them. Um, and I'll let you obviously talk a little bit more about that. But I think moving forward, um, we're going to talk a little bit about his story, you know, when he got into this, where it started, how it transitioned from strength conditioning or, or PT to his own company. So I think if anyone's interested in having their own business, they're in the physical therapy, fitness, strength conditioning, anything along those lines, I think it would be really nice for you to listen to this and really see his story um, and kind of how he got point A to point B and to the success he had today. So with that being said, I want to welcome Phil. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. That was a yeah. uh, solid intro. Yeah, you know, I do what I can, yeah. slowly but surely. Uh, so that being said, I want to um, kind of step back right to the beginning. So, uh, you know, where that you got started. So where did it all start with you? When did you get involved in fitness, strength conditioning or sports or where did it start for you? It probably started uh, youth soccer. So okay. youth soccer, probably around like four, four or five. Actually, in, in T-ball, that was the early days. We don't have to go deep into those days. But, um, I was a T-ball champion. You were a T-ball champ. Yep, crushed it. <laughs> I, I, I still couldn't hit the ball off the tee right now. <laughs> Baseball is my sport. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it started at an early age. And I think as a kid, I, I was like a very anxious kid to begin with. So I would, I would eat a lot. I would overeat and I was pretty active though. So I didn't gain a lot of weight, but I got pretty chubby to a point where I was feeling insecure in a way. So sports were kind of my outlet, but at the same time I was still overeating and eating a lot to kind of numb the anxiety that I would feel. So that's what really got me active and into sports um, and into athletics and strength conditioning in general. So were you not like so? How old were you? You said with that was you were a young kid. Was that like five, eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or teenager? It was years? like probably until about twelve or eleven, twelve. I was like, I was, you know, from like f say five to like twelve, and during that time, I was I was still very active. I was just um, I would just eat a lot, um, and I had no idea what what foods are good for you. You know, my family is just trying to be able to support what I needed. And, you know, my dad was kind of the one who stayed at home and my mom was the one who went to who worked full time. So, you know, between my dad trying to drive me and my sister around, it was tough to feed us. So things like McDonald's were were normal at times um, or, or pasta dinners, just things that they didn't realize were, you know, they were, they were still giving us calories, but it wasn't the best nourishment at the time. Right. So yeah. now you kind of, you're 13, 14, 15. So was it continued, mm -hmm. like sports was your outlet. So you were obviously having a good time sports. Um, when did it start to fit, uh, turn over to more of like a, a fitness side where you got into working out or maybe was it a sports that helped you transition into that side of it more? Yeah, a good question. That was probably about – I started going through puberty, so I got a little leaner at that time, around 13, 14. Uh, I did lose a lot of weight pretty quickly just because of that uh, hormone increase. Um, and then at the same time, I think it was like around 15, I started – kids started talking about weightlifting. So, you know, my dad had like a bench in the basement, so I started hitting that. I'd do like reps of 20 with like 90 pounds on the bench. Right. I – Probably at the same weight right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, spot. We'll talk about that later with the CrossFit stuff. But um, yeah, it was so I'd be I just hit I just go in the basement I just start working out I bench I would I don't even think I would squat I would just I would bench and do like curls and like tricep presses um, just a lot and then I tried to do dips between like the washing machine and the dryer. That was an experiment. Some old school shit right there. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I would I would try to do as much as I could in that time, because I 
I really had like a chip on my shoulder to be as good as I could, whether it was playing basketball or baseball or football, which I was trying to play as well because I joined the middle school football team at 13, about, yeah, 13, 14 years old. And I went to high school football too. Um, so, and try- so, no, you I was going to say, sorry. Yeah. So was, um, so you were in high school, was high school, like, did you have a sport that you played well, you played all the sports um, or like what, how did that work out for you? Um, I was, I was good. I was, um, I say mid-level athlete. I wasn't like the best of the best and I wasn't, um, I had been playing sports my whole life. So it wasn't like I was an amateur at them. So football, basketball, baseball, I was, yeah, I was average, but I'd say football was my favorite. Um, just because of me, I was able to predict more of what we were doing. So I was able to like, you know, okay. If I have to like come up with this, I couldn't really. So think of it like basketball. I couldn't really flow as well at basketball. Right. So neurologically, I, I fit better at football because this guy, I have a, as a tight end, you have a set route, or if, as a guard, you have a set blocking scheme of who you're going to hit. And basketball, it's not really. You have to kind of have to be a little bit more finesse with it, a little bit more fluid, and know kind of and kind of move with the with the current. Put it that way. Instead of like football, you can kind of like, okay, I'm going to run this post route. Right. And that's all I have to do. Were you more of a, uh, like, were you, so you kind of growing up too, you said you were, you ate a lot and all that, but were you more of like a thinner kid and it was hard for you to put on weight or you put on weight pretty easy? I, as a, as a kid before puberty, I put on weight pretty easy. I was pretty chubby. Um, I wasn't like huge, but I was, I was insecure of my body image and how I was being portrayed in front of, you know, my peers. So I was always the chubbier kid and then come to a few years later, puberty, I lost a lot of weight. And then, you know, you're the other way in a, in a, in a sense. Um, so then I was trying to, you know, lift and get stronger and run and get more athletic, get in shape, um, just to kind of prove everyone else wrong and who you're playing against, show your coaches, you're, you're worth it and all those good things. So after high school, did you, continue to play sports in college or anything or is that where you got more of into the working out out of enjoyment or how did that yeah. work? I think I had to find an outlet so I started I just started picking up more lifting and uh attaching myself to so uh some of those individuals in the strength conditioning field like Eric Cressy and Mike Boyle around that time it was probably 2007 2008 2009 right in those years was when I really started getting into it because I I didn't have any sports. You know, I played intramural football, but that's not the same as playing an organized sport for a team. Right. Um, and going full board there. So I, I started, you know, reading as much as I could in that time frame, you know, and I, I, I would classify myself as kind of like a nerd. You know, I'd stay in Friday nights and read shoulder books sometimes, but. Um, <laughs> the PT side of you. I, yeah, I, I didn't, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a. It wasn't a, a job for me. It wasn't just, it wasn't painful. Like I liked to do it because I wasn't being tested on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can relate to that. Aspect. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because yeah. when I first started, I was 20 when I started like training on my own and all that. And I would just sit there for hours and just YouTube videos or like look up research of nutrition and this. So it's funny in mm. the beginning when you're super interested in it, it's like you said, it's not a job. You're just like, you're just trying to learn as much as you can and put your own workouts together and do all this stuff. So it's, it's a whole different dynamic mm-hmm. at the beginning for me anyway. Um, and and so after you got into the working outside, did you start in college right away as like a PT? Uh, so I went to UMass Amherst for four years, got my bachelor's in kinesiology. So I did that. Um, that was where I guess I, a lot of my early learning came from those days. I also had an internship with Cressy Performance, uh, Cressy Sports Performance now. Um, and then in 2011, I graduated from UMass, and then I also applied uh, to Northeastern, entered Northeastern University in uh, 2011 for my doctorate of physical therapy. So with the Cressy side, if people don't know like Cressy Performance, what did you mainly do there? Like, what was that internship revolved around? Uh, it was it was amazing. It was my first like real experience, I guess, in a formal training world um, to kind of see how things operate and granted he, that was only like their second year of operation in 2009 and I was very fortunate to have that opportunity to be an intern there um, along with a couple other guys 
it was uh, it was very eye opening, and it taught me a lot about how to interact with people too. Was um, it mostly athletics, or is it a wide? It was. Of yeah, it was. It, when I was there, it was more of a variety. Uh, Eric definitely had his hands in uh, with a few more baseball kids, baseball athletes in high school. So he was working with a lot of those kids, but at the same time, they also had power lifters. They had a bobsled guy. They had football players in college. Uh, they had a variety of everything back in those days. Now it's mostly it's mostly going to be baseball. Um, that's really what they excel at is the strength conditioning part of baseball and managing um, everything that comes in line with programming and, and training modalities for that population. So. No, it makes sense. With mm -hmm. um, so you you were at Northeastern did physical therapy there. Um, why do you think you were leaning towards more of the physical therapy side? Was it you just naturally caught on to the the rehab prehab side of it, or was it more that just caught your interest, or why not maybe strength conditioning or something a little different? Uh, I think it's because my mom was in healthcare, and I really had no other way. I was like, you know, strength conditioning is. For me, I wasn't a very like super outgoing person, and strength conditioning, in order to really, really accelerate at it and uh, be able to pay off your loans, I needed to. I'd have to push myself, and I wasn't a very outgoing person, but I was able to follow rules. So I, I enrolled in PT. I had the mind for it, and you know, my mom was kind of pushing me to do that as well, um, and that's kind of what got me into physical therapy. I just I could see things a little bit differently. I have more of a very like visual mind, so I can picture all the muscles, the nerves, all the, how the body moves. And after you know making you know consideration between strength conditioning PT, it wasn't a huge one. I was like, yeah, I think PT is the way to go. I need to get you know this degree in order to find a job that's going to be able to um, afford me the opportunity to give back as much as I can. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that makes a lot of sense, mm -hmm. you know, especially it's hard because when you're a the strength conditioning world, you know, it's very competitive, obviously. And it's it's like you said, those outgoing in the strength conditioning big rooms like it's it's a whole different world than physical therapy. Um, and I think a lot of people getting into strength conditioning don't really realize, you know, the pay scale and also yeah. the <laughs> masters is mandatory to have any type of shot being in a and, and it's a pay your dues thing. Like you really got to pay your dues. It's just absolutely absolutely yeah it's and it's i mean P pt outpatient pt a standard outpatient is always going to have a ceiling you're never going to like never going to be like oh you'll make 200 grand being a pt not not quite i mean it depends it depends on what you want it depends on what you make pt out to be physical therapy PT. Sure. some people call personal training but physical therapy is everything you know even in the training world it's everything you make it out to be so what? So the next part I want to go into is you. So you're a physical therapist. Were you at a place before you were at Lifetime, or was that your first PT? Yeah, year? I've had a couple changes of jobs, believe it or not. Um, so I had an uh, my first job was in motor vehicle accidents and workers' comp cases, and yeah, actually, spin. I'm right there now. Anyways, I'll talk about that. So I sure. started there, and then I was like, it was it was good. I had a it was my first job. I had a lot of leverage because it's a small company, um, but I needed to. I just needed to get. I needed to do more, and I was like, uh, I'm going to give back more. I so I applied a lifetime, and that's what brought me a lifetime. And that was a whole new. That was a whole new ordeal too, um, right. because they were starting a whole. They were starting a whole concierge medical service with physical therapy and chiropractic at the same time. Um, so that was a totally different. A lot world. of moving parts. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, new ownership came in. That everything went south there. I I jumped ship there um, after about a year and a half because I met you in 2017. That's um, right. Yeah, it was 2017. In I started in June, July, and then I saw you just deadlifting like a madman. Um, Back when I could deadlift like a madman. <laughs> I was like 495. I was like, this guy's like repping 495 sumo for like doubles here. Um, and then after that, I left in 2018 and went to uh, ATI. And the and the reason I left that was because in 2017 I started Element 26. I don't know if you can see my shirt, the E26 yeah, yep, here, with a buddy of mine. And I needed, I just needed to get out of Lifetime because I didn't have enough 
mental focus and clarity up top to dedicate to uh, element 26. So I went to another job that I, you know, I wanted to give back as much as I could during the day, but I wanted to go home and focus on my girlfriend or focus on what else had to be done for the company. Yeah. So you didn't have a shut off. I mean, you felt like you're constantly doing something working. And mm -hmm. uh, that was when I left Boston. I know we talked briefly about it. And that was for me, a huge thing is I got burnt out from the high volume programming, the sales, like you just couldn't shut off. Every time I was home, I felt like I was trying to do something. And it was uh, a, yeah. an interesting, it was an eye opening experience because the money I was making was pretty good, but it was super high stress. So it's, it's oh, hard yeah. to find that balance. Um, so with, uh, so what, so tell people about Element 26. You obviously you were in mm -hmm. PT. Um, there was a reason you decided to go in a slightly different direction and do your other thing. So kind mm -hmm. of what was the reason to start Element 26 um, and kind of what exactly is it? So I started it actually right in 2017. Uh, my friend came to me, my old roommate at UMass Amherst came to me and he's like, Phil, I want to, you know, I want to start this company. It's, uh, you know, I want to sell some things on Amazon. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Let's, let's do it. He's like, you can be the face of the company um, because you're a physical therapist. And I think we can make this thing really work. Um, so he, so we, we decided on, you know, we did the whole Amazon keyword ranking. Granted, you know, going back in time, you can do it this way on Amazon and find a product, a niche product and sell things. But I would have, I would have built the brand first. So I would have tried to build the brand and then go on to Amazon. Um, so, you know, some people may say we started backwards. I mean, I think we're right where we need to be right now, but anyways, let's go back. Um, I got, so he, we decided on a weight belt in July of July, August, uh, say August of 2017. And he sent me a bunch of belts and I decided on which belt I liked the most. And from there we launched that product with a few modifications within the next year or so. And it's been selling very, very well on Amazon, and it's doing pretty well on, it, you know, it probably generates maybe ten to twenty percent of our sales off of Amazon as well right now. So, but in the in the beginning stage, that was a whole that was a whole that was a bunch of question marks when we just started in 2017 because I also just started at Lifetime too at the exact same moment. Um, so, and it's it's been growing ever since. Um, Anything else you want me to elaborate on the on the product yeah, side? So, yeah, well, so you you started with belts, you know. Now you're doing a lot more with it. So the whole mm -hmm. company, the whole company, it sounds like was based around you had an idea, um, sell a product online. You being the face of it started with belts, and then as the belts were successful, then you started to expand it a little bit to kind of create more of a whole um, yeah whole line in a way. Oh uh, yeah. Um, also, I forgot to mention for the for the viewers. Um, my background is in powerlifting, so I, so I did compete a few times, and it was tough to really find a powerlifting niche for for this belt because it's a nylon belt um, with a it has got like a self locking buckle right now um, with a metal pin, and it that those kind of belts aren't gonna they're not gonna be I guess uh, what's the right word they're not gonna be taken as seriously with power lifters right because it's a lighter weight it's not as heavy duty mm -hmm. you know and that's your background too you, the power lift thing then you got into the crossfit side a lot more where mm -hmm. that's where you see a lot of people using it yeah exactly so these these bells are more for like a metcon or you can use them for heavy one rep maxes in fact i still i still do it i love it and a lot of our athletes do as well um but some of them also just prefer the leather belt for like a one rep max or a, a heavy a heavy set over 90 percent um, of that one rep max. Um, yeah, uh, I forget where I was going next. But <laughs> no, it's fine. So we had, yeah. the, so you had different lines. So like yeah. to, to give people an idea, we talked a little bit about your background. So you mm -hmm. had the powerlifting background. That's, you know, like that side of it. You got into the more of the Metcon CrossFit side of it. So then the company almost revolved a lot, that belt to that niche to fill that void. Um, yeah. That side. And then you also started, was it wrist wraps? You started a couple of uh, little grip stuff, yeah. you started different things. So once we got the belt, once we got the belt really going, we can, uh, we released a few other products. Like we had knee sleeves, we had, um, we came up with straps a few months later, tape, 
uh, had to re had to liquidate the knee sleeves for issues. Had to adjust the belt, um, grips. We got grips a little while after that. Hand grips, you know, the ones you use for. Uh, yeah, you see a lot of the CrossFitters use right, 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 right. or, or tipping pull-ups. Um, the straps are unique because they're figure eight. But uh, it's it's been a, it's been a journey in terms of the product development. It's just because me and Jason, my roommate from UMass, with a with a the, with a with the starters for that um, until 2018, where we brought on a another guy who was with Jason, I believe, in Hawaii, um, in the airborne division. Um, they're both Army veterans, and He's they were there, right? What do you say? He's promoting it in his gym. Is it where's his or something like that? Oh yeah. So he well he's in Oman right now. Um, so he's so this my other business partner. So it's, there's three of us. There's there's me, Jason, uh, who's my roommate from UMass, and then uh, Jason, who's the other um, owner of Element Twenty Six, and he lives in Oman right now. So he's he when we brought him on in early 2018. He started taking over more of the role of product development because he's big into CrossFit. He's been doing it for probably a decade and a half, or at least a decade. Um, and he, you know, he knows the ins and outs. He's owned a box himself. Cool. So now the other cool thing too is you see a lot of the content you put out is, um, you know, a lot of your athletes. You see a lot of the Element Twenty Six. You got all these CrossFit athletes wearing them. We've talked about you go into these events and stuff. So it's obviously starting to get more and more well known mm -hmm. um so you know so what kind of um so with that marketing side of it so are you involved a lot with the crossfit side because that's what it seems like a lot of the advertising is going mm -hmm. into yep that's we just we stick right to crossfit everything uh, functional athletes functional gear for functional athletes that's our model gotcha. um so we stick to all things crossfit um and everything we post every everything i market with because i do most of the email marketing the Instagram marketing, uh, social media, Facebook group stuff. Um, that's everything I write is towards CrossFitters gotcha. um, with the what? functional performance in mind. Okay. Now what has been, so your business is obviously doing pretty well now, you know, it seems mm -hmm. like it's been consistently growing. Mm -hmm. What has been the biggest eye opening experience over the last, you know, say three or four, three years or so since you started this, what has been some of the biggest, like, Holy cow, I didn't, you know, eye-opening scenarios throughout this process. Getting good at time management. <laughs> yeah. Figuring that out. <laughs> um, well, just a lot of planning and organizing and. That's one thing. And then uh, just y you get good at putting yourself out there in very uncomfortable ways. It was very difficult for me to push, to push myself as a power lifter to go up to like a CrossFitter and try to talk to them. And try to get try to gain their respect. Um, so, what you know, what I ended up doing was actually joining a CrossFit gym last last May, May June, and then I've been doing CrossFit ever since. So I'm I'm pretty religious. I do it like three to four times a week. Um, I still you know I'll still lift and still do some standard stuff. Maybe uh, like straight lifting. Like today I did. I, I trained with a buddy at a at a at a more of like a powerlifting gym and I just hit some RDLs some just for general strength and performance and then um, hit some uh, some basic cleans and snatches because I don't get enough pro I don't get enough practice at my own CrossFit gym um, we just mostly a lot of Metcons and then one strengthening drill but I'd like to ideally do some more volume so um, joining you know joining CrossFit itself was something I've been doing just to get more into the field and understanding the the emotional side of things like when something gets hard, do you just push through it or do you draw back? Like, what does it feel like to have your lungs burning and your, your, your literally want your legs want to fall off? Um, yeah. now I don't yeah. send it, I don't send it that hard every time, but you know, you, you get the, you get what it feels like to be in that position because that's what a lot of our customers and our audience are feeling. Right. And if I don't feel that, like there's no, like there's no connection. I have to have that connection in order to be in order to go that far. Um, so I still like to I still enjoy to lift heavy, but I have to I really have to get down that uh, a lot of those Metcons and those aerobic capacity workouts. 
What do you, so I want to kind of talk about the workout side a bit more. So you had the background in powerlifting kind mm -hmm. of, um, with the company too, got more into the CrossFit side. Mm -hmm. Um, you've, I would assume powerlifting was like your passion initially. Um, so is there one that's, is CrossFit way more mentally taxing than powerlifting to you? Is like a one rep max, like way easier to psych yourself up for mm -hmm. than going through a Metcon or what is the differences for you when it comes to, you know, yeah. being, you have the PT side, you've done both of them, you promote kind of in both of them. Like which one is more difficult for you um, or one do you enjoy more? Uh, so being myself, I guess I just put pressure on myself either situation. You know, if I'm like, if I'm hitting like three sets of two on the back squat, I want those to be good sets. I want them to be like legit. Um but if it's like, you know, it's three by two at like 75%, you know, it's going to be an easy workout. If it's like a Metcon, I guess it depends on how I feel. Like some days I'll feel good. I'll be like, all right, this is going to, this is going to suck. Like I feel good. I'm going to push myself literally to the brink of like feeling like crap. Sure. I will do it, but it's not going to be enjoyable. Right. I was really talking to my, uh, to a friend of mine and one of the athletes we sponsor through element 26, uh, Pete Mason, who's actually elite qualified for Wadapalooza in a couple weeks, um, I was like, I was like, Pete, do you ever get nervous for like some of these events? He's like, yeah. He's like, every time. He's like, it's like I get nervous. He's like, it's not going to be fun. This thing is going to suck. He's like, it's going to be awful. And I just right. have to hang in there for the next 10 to 20 minutes, however long it's going to take to do this. You know, he was running, uh, he was he was doing the Wadapalooza workout yesterday, which is a, a thousand a thousand meter run with a 20 pound rucksack on 10 bar muscle ups and then a hundred air squats and then yeah. three times that. Yeah. So, but he's, he's, he's on a different world. He's like incredible, but it's like even the, even the best athletes are like, yeah, this, some of this is not going to, it's not going to be fun. It's going to suck. You just have to push yourself through it. And that's the mental capacity you need. Um, as far as powerlifting goes, I, th I think now CrossFit's getting easier, so it's not as much. It's not as stressful to prove to myself that I can do it. It's because I've been I've been adapted to it for the last eight or so months. Uh, granted, there's so much more, you know, space to hit between now and the ceiling. Right. But I, I'm doing pretty well, and you know, powerlifting. You know, I've lost some strength, but I would still push myself to hitting a big number if I if the ch if the chance arose. Do you plan on competing at all? For a CrossFit? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I do want to hit a competition soon. There's like a whole, like I literally have probably four lined up that Element 26 is going to sponsor. This isn't even including Waterpalooza. We have a we have a whole booth set up at Waterpalooza oh. in a week and a half in Miami, so we'll be there. Um. But I we have like I have like, I have personally have like four private ones that are lined up that we have to sponsor with gear. And I'd love to compete at any one of these. It's just usually I'm the one behind the behind the booth, uh, talking to people, interacting, or uh, you know I just have other things that have to be done because it's usually on a weekend that they have the competitions, especially the local ones. Um, yeah, with the so with the the, the element twenty six, you know, I think a lot of people, I think more than ever, uh, people believe that entrepreneurship starting your own business, like the best thing, the greatest thing. Like, you know, I was trying to do my own little thing, but I had a quick reality check between it all of how much time and effort that goes into this entire thing. And mm. it's like, and Gary says it's the best in one of my eyes. And th he says, you know, you work, you're basically working 80 hours a week. So you don't have to work 40 for someone else. You know, it's, it's kind of like that. How, um, how do you balance like, you know, your training, your business, your relationship mm. obviously time management for you has been important but um you know do you find yourself getting overwhelmed because i know you have a very high expectation for yourself on everything you do you yeah know? very so, much so yeah. yeah um i get so i i've been better at this with my last job i had a routine and because i made that shift actually back to um that first employer because they were to give they were to give me a good deal with only 30 hours a week um, of PT work while I work more on element 26. Um, it's just, it's a, like a learning curve again. So I'm trying to like figure out, you know, I'll, I'll wake up at five 30. I'll do work from six to eight. I'll eat breakfast. I'll drive to work. I'll work until six o'clock. 
I'll drive home and then that at that time it's like dinner and spend time with my girlfriend. Um, I just kind of get into a routine that allows me to accelerate at each thing and I try not to have things trickle over into other time blocks. So if I'm working, I try not to let element 26 trickle into that time block. You know, if a patient cancels, I might check my phone, but I'm not going to go over um, a certain amount of time because I've only allotted myself like a lot myself like five, 10 minutes in that moment. Um, same with, you know, when, when I go home at night, I don't, I don't do any work after about seven or eight o'clock because that's time I'm spending with my girlfriend. Um, I want to give her the attention that, uh, she deserves and the attention that I deserve from her, um, in that, in, in those moments, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, I'll get too distracted if I'm spending on element 26, but the first two hours I wake up, I'll also definitely be all element 26 emails, check Facebook, make a post, write an email, whatever it needs to be, or touch base with my, my business partners. Everything has to be done in that time frame. Now, certain days a little bit longer, like Fridays, you know, I have off Fridays now, I'll spend a little bit more on element 26. Um, I'll go to the gym and then I'll come home and work for like three to four hours on whatever needs to be done. And I you, try to, sorry, I'll try, I, I try to like silence my phone in that time too. Yeah. So it's just, it's a mix of that time management and just put like prioritizing certain things and just making sure you're, you're doing what you got to do. It's, it's kind of, yeah. Cause I, it, that's what I realized a lot of it was too, is it's just prioritizing time, you know, and, and finding, you know, what works for you, because I'm a routine person, too. So if you don't have that routine in your life, and it's kind of all scattered, you know, you almost you feel like you're unproductive, you're never you're never getting anything done efficiently. Anyway, um, what do you do you have any plans with element 26 right now moving forward? Or right now? Is it just trying to to, to keep doing what you're doing? Or, or is you know, is there a direction you see it going in more? Uh, yeah, I mean, for now, it's just product. It's just Get these products out. Get the next products we want. Um, launch, launch our. Uh, we have two in the queue that we're trying to launch right now, and then we have we're trying to come up with a few different other variations of. We haven't fully decided on which ones. Get those out, and then just keep growing it. Like we're just we're all about scaling it right now. Um, and we haven't really thought about hiring anyone quite yet until you know you know i'm not even full-time on it so once i can go full-time uh, sustainably then yeah and is that's that more probably, based off income is your like you want to make yeah sure you can supply enough income for everybody exactly so we have to hit a certain number in order to allow myself to go full-time um and we have to do that consistently you know so if, if sales stay consistent where they are now I, I i don't see it taking too much longer um for myself to go full-time Hopefully by the end of this year, um, I will be full time. Yeah, so. and I think at that point, you, if you can get full time on it, I, logically your numbers should grow even more because you're spending significant mm -hmm. more time doing it. Well, I already noticed. I already noticed, like in the last week of starting this, you know, starting with my former employer again um, for 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 the physical therapy stuff. It's I have more time because I work, you know, ten to twelve hours less a week. Um, so I have, you know, whether it's time during the week or time on Friday and Saturday to get other things done, it's, it's huge. It's a huge benefit. It's a big stressor off my back. Yeah. Is there a point with the business, um, that you were like wanting to throw in the towel early on? Was there uh, you were just like completely I, like, this is just too much. It was too overwhelming. Uh, there's, you know, there's always times where it becomes overwhelming and it becomes a grind. I guess I've never, I guess I've more thought of like, how do I make myself work more efficiently at this than actually like, I'm not, I, I'm not someone that like likes to give in. Maybe it's because of my ego. I, I don't know. Not a bad um, thing. But um, I, I, I'll, I'll adjust things in my life to support that. Or if like, you know, me and me and my business partner, there's always like little disagreements on things and we figure out ways to talk about it or figure out ways to create a more sustainable model in our lifestyle that's going to allow him to accelerate and then me to accelerate as well. For, 
for me, there's things that uh, I do on a daily basis to try mm -hmm. to keep my mind right. And and because I think a lot of this, you have to be, you got to be positive. You have to be upbeat. You have to do the best you can to keep your energy high and keep the right mindset. So like, I will watch like YouTube videos, audio books. Are there things that you do on a daily basis that you think that help you do what you do or that other people could maybe help them, whether it's just creating that better mindset? Yeah. Um, so I usually make daily posts too in our private Facebook group for Element 26. It's called Team E26, uh, Less Ego, More Iron. Um, so I'll do some motivational stuff there. That one that that keep that holds me accountable because you know I'm supposed to be posting in that regularly. Um, but I also listen to I listen to Audible books a lot. I listen to podcasts because um, I do spend a good amount of time driving. So those are huge in terms of just keeping my mind focused. And then and then just I take time to myself too. Sometimes sometimes I just want to relax and like listen to you know I'll listen to Taylor Swift and I love it. T-Swift. Yeah, T-Swift. Or like something that's like really like fun just to get my mind like relaxed. Like after a long day, it's like, okay, I can't – like I am so like drained mentally that I'm not going to be able to get anything out of this Audible book right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to listen to some music. Just easy, nothing, easy listening. Sure. Um, that is that is a huge component. I mean – and it helps when pe you know people are saying, well, this – you know, you're, you're – I, I, I like the content you're coming out with. Like I just got an email that said, um, appreciate the content. Keep up the, the heavy lift work. You know, this is in relation to um, something about mindset, I think. And like little things like that that just make a difference in someone else's life is what motivates me. So I see that and it helps, you know. You know, granted, some people like – you know, this belt sucks or it doesn't help me or whatever. You know, you just you just roll with the punches. Um, you know, you gotta be able to take a lot of heat at first starting the business. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are like, What are you doing? You're a PT, you're gonna start selling yeah. a belt. Like, uh, how did you deal with that? I guess I I guess I, I, I could I could see that it was just people were just saying that and that I give people the benefit of the doubt and I'm like, oh they're just you know, they're just saying that because maybe they're just having a bad day or something. You know, I, I just reframe it. So I reframe a lot of those things and be like, put myself in their shoes. I Maybe they're, maybe they've had a, a bad upbringing, which is why they got to that point of saying that, right. you know, that makes me feel a little bit better. I'm like, I try not to like let what someone else says bring me down on my mission. Because if I put my mission as to be the light for everyone around me and make someone else's life better, even if it's one person, that still makes me feel better and at least know I'm giving back to someone or helping someone else out there. Yeah. It's crazy to me that you have, you have to be a very sad person to take the time out of your day to make a comment, something negative on someone's post to make them feel like shit. Like you really yeah. have to be a like, pretty miserable person. Yeah. You know? so that's how I try to think about it. I'm like, if I took hate on someone, I'm like, man, you are just so sad. Like, I, I feel bad for you how upset you are with your own life. In fact, you have to take the time to try to bash someone else. It's very sad. Yeah, it's – it's. Uh, I mean, a lot of people do that, and I, I, I understand that, you know, there's some, some other point in their life that's made them do something like that, you know, maybe – Maybe their, you know, their credit card is overcharged or, or whatever, and they're, you know, something happened. They saw that, and then they said, I, you know, I don't need a belt. Uh, this is a silly ad, advertisement, um, you know, things like that. Luckily on social media, a lot of times you can just block or delete comments. So we do. We do. It's a wild animal. Yeah. We, so you have to be able to things that are inappropriate. Like I actually like people that question things, um, and I'll respond to them thoughtfully and uh, professionally. Um, but other ones that are just vulgar, I'm just like, all right, I'm going to, I'll jump in on those combos. I'll, I'll back you out of those. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Yeah, I'll take care of them. Um, I'll, so tag I, you, I'll tag you, I'll tag you next time. And I said, I'll tag you next time. I'll, I'll let you respond to them. I, I'm more blunt than I've ever been on social media. I won't talk politics cause it's just, that's a war zone, but, um, like fitness yeah. stuff, I like to kind of push people's buttons. Cause I, I think the majority of the fitness industry is just flawed. Yeah. Uh, so it's per like I saw a post the other day. This girl I was talking to, it, and I literally was just saying how I, you know, I was like, oh, she's super cool. Like this, she's actually educated about it. And then yeah. literally, she started her own like she's a coach now. 
And the first post I saw was like how to drop um, two to 10 pounds in three weeks. And I'm like, oh God, here we go. So I was like, it's over. Like, I can't talk to this girl again. I, I wanted to reach out and be like, what are you doing? She graduated from Springfield like this couple of years ago. And I'm like, oh God. But anyway, yeah. um, I have one more question, like a two part question. Sure. So we talked a little bit about the fitness side of it, the coaching side of it. We talked a bit about, um, mm -hmm. you know, the business side of it. So if you had to give a two-part question, advice to someone that's just starting to go into the gym, wants to start getting healthier, mm -hmm. um, what would you recommend them to do? And then on the other side of it, what would you recommend someone to do that says they wake up tomorrow and they're like, I want to start my own business? And a piece of advice maybe from your experience, like the best approach to take. Well, I can answer both of those. Um, I think they're very similar. And a lot of times, like, so when I was starting, whether it was the gym um, when I was, like, 14 years old or starting a business when I was 28 years old, 28, yeah, 28 years old, um, is just is just take action and understand that nothing is going to be perfect. Like, literally nothing is going to be perfect. And there's going to be a lot of hiccups. Like, you might weigh yourself on the scale one day and then a month later weigh yourself again and you're the same weight. Um, that doesn't mean you're not losing weight. You could be losing fat and gaining muscle or you just have intracellular fluid that's increased and that's why you're heavier. Um, or starting a business, like you might have to put down some of your own money, you know, a thousand bucks of your own money and then you might not make that back for a while. That's like 12 months, you know. It, it, really, it really comes down to – how much you're just willing to work at it and understand not everything is perfect. Like me talking on this video, like I'm not perfect at public speaking or, or talking to somebody, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to try. Um, right. There's no way to get, get better. better. Exactly. So that's exactly what I would say to somebody that was in those shoes is like, you know, and I'm still learning. Um, we should be passing the, you know, the million dollar mark this year for element 26, but we have a lot of things to learn in terms of uh, product sourcing development. Like there's always things we can refine. Uh, digital marketing, we can get a lot better there and optimize there. Um, and then my own fitness, like, you know, uh, you know, sometimes I want to devote more time to my own fitness, uh, but it's not going to be perfect. Like I understand I'm going to lose strength here because I'm doing a lot more CrossFit, but it's mostly going to be Metcons. I'm not devoting as much time to the strengthening aspect of it. And, you know, I understand that, and I'm, but I'm willing to go into that journey and sacrifice something here and there. So as long as you're willing to take action and make a couple sacrifices, you'll be golden. You just have to, you just have to learn by error, and that's really what it comes down to. I think that's great advice. It. I think that's great advice. That it comes down to it's being patient, taking your time. You know, not mm -hmm. overwhelming yourself and realizing it's not going to happen overnight. Whether it's fitness, business, whatever it is, you know. Yeah. And then it comes down to work ethic. Like you said, it's a lot of people want to be good at something. They want to be a power lifter, a bodybuilder. They want to have their own business, but they're not willing to put in even anything remotely close to the work because that's the end of the deal. So cool, man. I love the answer. I appreciate you you taking the time to come on. Um, we'll definitely um, stay in touch and, and get things rolling for you. And uh, uh, moving forward, if anyone wants to reach out to you, I'll tag you on a bunch of things, but you're on Facebook, Insta, you're on all the platforms. Yep. I'm on uh yep, I'm on Facebook, Philip Gothier, uh, Instagram, Philip Gothier, but then you have Element Twenty Six. Uh, um, the Facebook group is Element Twenty Six Team uh, Team E Two Six Less Ego More Iron. Um, that's more of a private group for more daily, weekly interaction there. And then they can check out my website too, www.element26.co, not .com. Um, okay. So that's our website there with all our gear, and they got some blogs there. Um, and then definitely subscribe to the email too, guys, because yeah. that's where that's where all the magic happens. That's not the magic, just, baby. I'm not gonna spam you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> right, 20 times a yeah. day. No, cool. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll share it on Facebook, we'll share it on YouTube, yeah. and then on Facebook we'll just put all the information in there, so it'll cool. be good to go. Awesome. Cool, man. Well, I thanks. I appreciate you taking the time, man. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. No problem.